My guest today has a life-transforming testimony to share with us, and his name is Oswald Boswald. Hey, man, welcome to Toronto. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, listen, let's start with the name. Okay, uh, so it's not my... It's not your birth name. No, no, it's not my <laughs> Christian name. Um, you know, in the music business, you want something that sticks. So uh, I was actually with a group of friends, and just I always thought the name Oswald was cool, and Oswald Boswell came out, made us all laugh, and I said that might be it, and uh, it stuck. I had and it, it stuck, yeah. and it's working. So that's yeah, cool, man. Exactly. Yeah. Now, have you been to Toronto before? No, this is uh, this is my first time. Yeah, first so, time. Okay. Yeah. Now, man, I was reading your bio and, and preparing for this interview, and I was just I was so touched because it always blows my mind how how God can can reach people that are seemingly unreachable and. Right. I think you were in the unreachable category, or maybe you even thought, tell me a little bit about your background, the kind of stuff that you were into before you came to faith, man. So, you know, I've always been a spiritual person, misguided though. Okay, you know, spiritual. Kind of spiritual, like, like, you know, I believed in God, but okay. I didn't really have any direction. Um, you know, I was raised in a non-practicing Catholic home. Mm. Um, and, you know, I just, I guess lost is the best word to describe it. Yeah but felt some sort of connection. And um, man, you know, God really found me in probably the most unlikely of places. I was playing poker in an underground card room in New York City. No, that's a thing, right? Yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of card rooms around Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, wherever. Mm. Um, long story how I ended up getting into one of these rooms, but you know, fast forward to me at the poker table. Yeah. And you know, I was there all the time. I played a ton of poker. Yeah. And I became, don't fast forward too much, man. Tell us yeah. a little bit. How did oh, yeah. you end up in that whole underground world of poker? Well, this was right around the time when uh, Chris Moneymaker won the World Series, so it was all over TV. Very popular thing. You okay. know, all of a sudden, everyone had the dream. I want to be a professional poker player. Really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I was uh, selling my music on the street. I did that for like two years. Mm just selling CDs hand to hand and one day I got arrested for not having a vendor's permit. You know, not a huge deal, but yeah, spent the still. night in the can and like that wasn't fun. Oh no. Right. And uh, you know, I said, let me just take like a little break from the daily grind of selling CDs every day. Sure. And let me just see if I can, uh, you know, find a place in the city to play some cards. So I went online, somebody put up an ad about a, you know, a private card room and I went mm -hmm. through the process of, you know, you know, uh, the emails back and forth, and then there's, you know, the screening. Yeah. Is that kind of a CD process? How does that, how does that go? No, I mean, they, they ask you a lot of questions, but yeah. it's not like the movies, it's not so theatrical. Okay. You know, right. it's, it's, you know, they, they make it look really different than maybe it is. Sure. But, so anyway, I find my way in, and, um, you know, I became friends with a lot of guys that were in there. You see the same faces all the time playing mm -hmm. cards. And one of my buddies that I was playing uh, pretty regularly with, he became a Christian, oh, wow. and he was a drug dealer. He was in gangs. I mean, he was a pretty hardcore dude. Wow. And when we were playing poker, man, he would just witness to me all day. And it was the first time I wow. really heard scripture or the gospel like that. See, that, that, that's challenging a lot of people. Yeah. While you were playing poker in an underground tournament or whatever, yeah. this man was witnessing yeah. to you. And that started to what? To impact you? To hit home? Yeah, absolutely. So it was the first time I'd ever heard anybody speak with like such conviction mm -hmm. and everything really made sense. I couldn't disagree with it, but I also had a lot of questions. So it kind of opened up the door for me to explore, you know, faith. Sure. And I started reading a bunch of books and, you know, Lee Strobel's Case for Christ. Oh, awesome. I got about halfway through that and that wasn't the first book I picked up, but that was the one that put me over the edge and I said, well, my questions have been answered and then That's I just, amazing. I bought a Bible. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was an intense experience. So the day when I bought the Bible, I was walking out of the bookstore, and I just had this overwhelming feeling. I, it, you know, whether or not it actually happened, but I, it felt like everyone was walking in one direction. I was just like, so many people I have no idea. Yeah. It was really intense. It was overwhelming. Wow. You know, and that, you know, that was a defining moment for me. Okay. Now, how long ago was that? That was probably around 2008. So, okay. yeah, this wasn't yesterday, so it's been a journey even from yeah. that moment to, to get where I am now. Okay, so when you came back, or when you came to Christ, yeah. w what did that do to your, your desire to want to make music? Like, had you lost that desire? Was it on hold? Did this re-inspire That's it? something I wrestled with, and, yeah. you know, I think, uh, if I'm going to quote scripture, like Matthew chapter 13, where he talks about the seed, and I really resembled with the seed that was like choked by the, the weeds ah, okay. because it did impact me. And then I found mm. that after a while I would, you know, I, I'd catch myself like being caught up in the, the cares of the world. 
And, sure. you know, that was something I wrestled with. I didn't really have, other than my one buddy, uh, mm -hmm. a foundation of Christian friends or any community. And I was going through a really tough time, and I just called out to God, and I was like, I can't do this alone. And, I mean, like five minutes later, he put somebody in the entertainment industry in my life, and that's how I found my way into a church, and that's really when things started changing. Okay. And I made the, you know, the change that, like, I can't just compartmentalize my relationship or my faith with God. That's good. I need to give everything to him. Wow. You know? But that, it's not easy, you know. No, but it's uh, not. But having, uh, you know, the community around you really makes a difference. I love just, you know, I'm just listening to you. You know, I said to you, I just want you to talk and share from your heart. I mean, yeah. it's your testimony. You can't get it wrong. This yeah, is yeah. what you, you've gone through. Yeah. And just, you know, as a dad who has kids who are into the music that you're into, it's just so powerful to hear, you know, I prayed about it. I gave it over to God. I mean, it's wonderful to see your, your commitment to him. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so you're writing this Christian music. How's that going, you know, in, in, the, old, in the old world that you were a part of? Are they receiving it? Are there challenges with yeah, that? Yeah, well, that's, that's a really interesting thing, especially with, like, uh, electronic dance music. Mm -hmm. I think whether it's Christian or secular, whatever, like, it's about the music for a lot of people. Like, it has to be good. Right. So if it's good... It, it'll be well received okay. you know? and, and the thing also about you know dance music and why I want to be so open about my faith is a lot of that stuff doesn't even have words right so the music might True. bring them into and then they come and check out and want to learn more about me yeah oh wow I didn't know he was a Christian so That's it's out great. there it's not something I'm trying to you know hide or yeah. sweep under the rug and then maybe if you dig deep enough you'll find it no I want to put that out there and if you love the music, great. And then this is the story. And I would love to have that open the doors where I can talk about, you know, Christ with people. Yeah, well, I love that. You're definitely not hiding it because there are millions of people that are watching this interview yes. right now. <laughs> and tell us about your latest project. We only have a minute left here. And tell us how people can, can get yeah, hold so of Yeah, so the name of the project is called Transform. Like I said, it's the absolute that best. Yeah, it's the best stuff that I've made today. It's available on iTunes, Amazon, all the stores worldwide. Uh, Oswald Boswald is the name, yeah. and I just want to be clear that's Oswald with a Z, not an S. Sometimes okay. people get yeah, that yeah. confused. Yeah, but um, I think people will be really into it. I mean, like I said, it's the best music I've made today, and I'm just really excited to get out there and see yeah. what happens. Well, I, I'm so excited for you. It's great to see you know up and coming artists with a passion to serve God. And thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thanks for really sharing great. your testimony yeah. and your journey. Yeah. And I know that there are some of you out there right now who can identify with him. You know, you've been in the world and you've tried that, and it's just there's nothing there. It's not fulfilling. And and like Oswald, you just need to come to that place of surrender and say, God, I need to give my life to you and you can see on the bottom of your screens there we have our, our prayer lines please there are people 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 a year standing by waiting to pray with you and i hope that you'll call and let somebody walk you through how you can have a personal relationship with christ 